we talk about how unrelated acquisitions can lead to shareholder value. It's this the restructuring notion and the like we talked about in the prior um, lecture, but we'll talk in more detail this time about the, the thought process that one goes through if this is indeed the process that one is considering. You decide what sort of actions that you want to take, of course. You have to decide, this is the attractiveness test, you have to decide um, if the businesses that you're looking at, the industry you're in, the business that you're providing, that you're considering buying, will be able to provide, maybe it isn't now, but with the right changes, will be able to provide consistent profits, consistent earnings. In other words, whether or not it makes sense to, to invest in this company that will then make something that continues to throw off profits and comes in, you know, contributes cash and profitability to your overall portfolio. Once that's the case, you understand how that profit can come in the door and you know what you're going to need to do to do that. You decide whether or not indeed this is something that you can afford. You negotiate it. That is the cost of entry test. You negotiate whether you want to buy this company or invest in this company in some manner because you obviously have to make that back. So you have to have really good financial analysis skills that you understand what value can be created, how much that is actually going to be worth as you're going to, um, uh, as, you, as you make this, uh, this strategic move and you purchase this company to include in your portfolio. Lastly, you have to realize that there's going to be on man, ongoing management uh, efforts. It's a, it's a difficult business, to, difficult activity to run a business. There's going to be overheads associated with having this business in your portfolio, and one needs to be able to manage and think through all of those kinds of, of issues. So when you're pursuing an unrelated business strategy and you're diversifying and to build your portfolio and to grow, you have to understand that there's going to be demands on your time, on your energy, on the management team generally. You have to monitor. You have to put the right processes and controls in place. And you also have to realize that it all has to come, all the benefit that comes from the acquisition, the paying for the acquisition, if you will, the better off test in that acquisition, has to come from inside the company. So it's limited. You don't get the value of synergies by merging divisions or whatever with another company. You have to do it by improving the internal structure. Therefore, you have to be quite skilled and have quite a bit of confidence that you know exactly what you're going to do and how you're going to do it. This leads to the reason oftentimes that companies make acquisitions that aren't necessarily good ones. Sometimes one wants to make an acquisition simply because they have some of the business they're in are risky and they want something that's a little bit less risky. Well, investors could do that on their own. That's not really management's role to do that. And what you're going to end up doing is deflating the, um, the value of the total portfolio because you're trying to balance things that maybe don't fit together. You have uncorrelated businesses. And uh, there's a thing called a, uh, a holding company discount associated with that. So you could actually make a mistake and, and, and um, erode value by making decisions for the wrong reasons. Another is that sometimes people want you to grow, so you buy companies just so that you continue to grow, even though they're unrelated to your core business. And essentially, you can hide them sometimes in your financials if they're um, immaterial, you show growth, but essentially you're not really adding value. You're simply um, creating an illusion that you're adding value in this way. There's also sometimes cyclical issues, uh, balancing them out. Anything that you're doing, essentially, to kind of balance out uh, a business risk because you want to be in a different industry, because that industry has that risk. Anytime you do that, you are doing what is really the investor's job when they decide where to put their money into various investments. And because of that, you lose some of the value that you provide an investor by giving a high return in a particular area. And so you have this dis discount that you create. And you may actually, again, erode shareholder value. And sometimes people just buy companies because they want more. They want it. They want to buy it. It's an ego-driven thing that is also seriously, seriously a serious problem. So you have to realize that when you buy a company, when you make an acquisition of this type, you want to always be guided by the, by, the, by the notion of profitable growth. The company has to grow profitably. The portfolio has to grow profitably. And whenever you make an acquisition, you know how much the cost is. So you negotiate the price as low as you can and the terms as good as you can. 
and have in place a plan that is going to allow you to get returns that will pay for that and more so that in the end you're better off and you make an overall profit. That's the logic for creating shareholder value by, or by unrelated diversification. You have to be really good at what you're doing and you have to have a track record. That's the essential logic of it. In the next lecture, in the final one of this part one, we're going to talk about different corporate strategies and how one would think about uh, different ways to approach the corporate strategies. Uh, before in part two, we'll talk about how you look at a company and evaluate how well they've done all the things that we've talked about in this module so far. But next will be the last uh, lecture in this part one of the module of, of looking at corporate strategies, and we'll look at different ones. We'll see you then.